This is the left eye of a young three-year-old patient with posterior lenticonus. The patient has 2.75 diopters of corneal cylinder. You can see the uh, axis of the intended implantation of the toric lens placed on the cornea with the inkless marks. We'll go back to that uh, later, but you can see the uh, posterior polar lenticonus opacity. We're going to inject some uh, tripan blue, which I think helps not so much to visualize the capsule, but really can enhance and reduce some of the elasticity uh, of the uh, capsule to enable uh, a more stiff capsule rexus to help with these pediatric cataracts. And we use it routinely. We're using now a soft shell technique um, here with our standard viscoelastic dispersive uh, followed by a cohesive. And then we're going to use a super viscous, viscous agent here, Helon 5, which really is a fantastic way to really flatten the capsule. Of course, our first concern is performing an adequately sized centered continuous capsular excess. And we'll start the tear with a sharp tip utratus and here initiate our capsular excess. You can see we're going to use a combination of uh, both the shearing technique, which is folding the flap over, as well as stretching here. You can see uh, here at certain times, we're going to basically unfold the flap and allow the tear to occur by stretching the capsule to propagate the tear. And this helps to prevent that uh, rexus from running out, which is, of course, a concern in these uh, young pediatric uh, lenses. The, uh, again, the tripan blue has helped us as well as the use of um, the uh, super viscous viscoelastics. Now, we're going to avoid any hydrodissection. Uh, in my opinion, these are contraindicated uh, in this example, but we're going to do a little bit of anterior manual hydrodissection just to loosen up some of that cortex to enable and help with cortical removal. And then we're going to do some good hydrodelineation to separate the endonucleus from epinucleus. This will help us to remove that central endonucleus first, followed by the epinucleus. Of course, this being a soft lens, we're going to use the irrigation aspiration handpiece to first remove the central endonuclear um, central uh, zone here using the eye handpiece, and then now ch chipping away here, removing the epinucleus uh, 360 degrees around the periphery here, avoiding the central plaque here, uh, leaving that till the end. You can see I'm using a Kuglin hook here to keep that plaque down so we don't aspirate it just yet. The, the final position here with that posterior aspect of the epinucleus we're going to remove with the posterior polar opacity and you can see uh, we're using a Kuglin hook to help uh, aspirate it out. You can see what's left is of course the pigmented uh, area along that uh, posterior capsule. It does look like it's uh, fairly thin if not uh, necessarily intact and you can see the posterior outpouching here in this example of this uh, posterior polar or in this case you could argue lenticonus eye. 27 gauge uh, sharp a needle is used to incise the central posterior capsule after injection of viscoelastic in the AC, as we saw earlier, and then we're going to inject some dispersive viscoelastic here to separate uh, and keep the posterior capsule away from the anterior hyloid, injecting that into burger space. They're going to use a micrograsper to perform the posterior rexus. Of course, we're performing the posterior rexus here, which we do for all our pediatric cataracts less than the age of uh, four. And um, of course, what's important here is to prevent uh, any visual axis opacity, which is of course, a concern in these young patients. Uh, of course, this patient has it as well, uh, this uh, posterior polar opacity, which we need to remove here to enhance the visual re rehabilitation. So doing a posterior capsular rexus here, not too different than doing an anterior rexus, although you can see, of course, we're working in a steep uh, angle with our, with our instrumentation. And there's very little, of course, uh, counter-traction, and there's less tendency uh, for, uh, for any feedback, tactile feedback. Uh, you see here we're injecting some nervous elastic to ensure we've keep the chamber formed. And we're using here really a combination of, again, shearing and stretching techniques here uh, to ensure this rex is adequately sized. It's important to make sure it's going to be adequately sized here because we are going to eventually end up capturing the optic of the lens through this uh, posterior rexus. So again, a good 4 millimeter plus 5 millimeter or so, if, if you can, is important to do this. Now, we usually err on the side of making them a little smaller. You can see both the anterior and posterior capsular rexus here being made with the uh, posterior rexus slightly smaller than the uh, five or so millimeter anterior rexus that was made. Now we're going to inject some cohesive viscoelastic here to separate the anterior and posterior capsule leaflets, pre preparation for the lens implantation. And now this uh, single piece uh, clear uh, toric lens, this is a ZCT400 uh, Technus lens, is injected into the capsular bag first. We're going to rotate the lens into uh, its approximate position, slightly under-rotating it here, uh, if we recall where the marks are made. Now, this lens will account for about 2.75 diopters of uh, corneal cylinder, and this basically accounts for this patient's uh, cell. We, our, our goal here is really to maximize this patient's 
visual potential here uh, as a youngster. We're going to dry the cornea here. We can we'll point out the uh, marks. Again, there's no ink here. We use an inkless system here just of causing a bit of an epithelial divot. You can see I'm pointing it out right there. And then we will rotate the lens into position here using a cannula. Now, again, we've got viscoelastic in the eye, in the capsular bag here to facilitate that. Uh, we will then, uh, at this point, remove a little bit of viscoelastic from uh, in front of the uh, optic and behind the anterior capsule, just uh, here to remove some of that from the capsular bag. You can see we've used different viscoelastics here. Very important to use the right viscoelastics uh, for the right purpose. And we've used dispersives, cohesive, and superviscous cohesives as needed in this case. Typically using a tenovicular suture to close that incision. Initially, at least it'll be temporarily closed and cinched down here. At this point now, we're going to posterior optic capture this lens by pushing down on one pole of the optic away from the away from the haptics, getting underneath the posterior capsule, and now uh, positioning the uh, nasal optic underneath. Now we see the cat's eye appearance of the posterior capsule, nicely fixating the lens in position here, aligning it with the intended axis of implantation here along that steep axis of the uh, of the um, of the cornea, which is approximated approximated to be 85 degrees on our calculation. We're going to rotate the knot in place here, and you can see this lens really is nicely positioned. We prevent uh, uh, any rotation with that capture. And of course, what's key here in this case is to prevent any secondary visual axis of pacification. And we feel that avoiding an anterior vitrectomy here is a benefit. There's really no place for the cells to grow along the posterior capsule or the anterior hyloid. And this has been our pre preferred approach for pediatric cataracts and, of course, these posterior polar lenticonicides as well.